In this video, we'll learn how to make multiple dog objects. Since we have a template for MBF dog, we can easily make more of them. Our goal is to build an app where you can scroll through all of our dogs. First, let's add the images of our dogs, which will include a Jack Russell Terrier, a Borderline Collie, and a Greyhound. We can drag these images into our project, and like before, set up the proper op options for their later use. So I'm going to go ahead and make Xcode a little bit smaller so I can see the images on my desktop. And I'm going to drag these in to my supported files. And like before, I'm going to make sure I have copy items into destination groups folder if needed selected. We're going to create groups for any added folders, but we're not adding a folder, so it won't create a new group. And we're going to add to targets. Make sure We're going to definitely make sure we have this selected so that our project can properly access the photos. So I'll press finish. I can go ahead and make Xcode bigger again. So let's first confirm that our images got added to our project properly. So we can go through and click through these. Incidentally, if the supporting files folder is not open, you can use the caret to open and close it. And now that we see that all three of our images got added properly, we know we're going to be creating three more dog objects. So if we go back to mbfviewcontroller.m, Inside of the view did load method, let's create our second dog object. So the first thing we have to do is we have to give our variable a type. So we're going to write MBF dog, which is our class that we're going to be creating these objects from. And we're going to say second dog, which will be our variable name for our object. And we can allocate some space in memory for our new dog. So we'll say MBF dog alloc. We'll use the class method alloc to create space. And then we'll initialize our objects our object. Now that we have a variable and we've created our second object which is of type dog, we can do second dog dot name and oh, not dot new dot name is equal to we can say wishbone and we'll set up the rest of its properties so we'll say second dog dot breed to Jack Russell Terrier and we also need to set its image, so we can do dot image, and we'll use the class, me class method UI image, uh, image named, image named is our class method, and it expects one parameter that's of type and a string. So we know how to create strings using the at quotes, and I just have to give it the correct file name here. So I'm going to write at quote, and we'll say jrt.jpg. It's really important that you use the right name here because if you don't, the image named method won't be able to find the file that has our image data and convert it into a UI image object so that we can set the property dot image equal to this new object that we get back from the image name method. So let's go ahead and create the next two dogs. So we need to create MBF dog, third dog, which is again our variable name. And we'll say MBF dog alloc in it, third dog dot name, and we'll set this equal to Lassie. And our breed is going to be a collie. And our image is going to be, again, UI image, image named, and we'll give it the string. And again, this has to be the same thing as our file name. So we can say border collie dot jpeg. And next we'll finally create our last object here. So we're gonna do MBF dog, fourth dog. And we can write MBF dog Alec in it. Fourth dog dot name. It's equal to angel. Fourth dog dot breed is equal to greyhound. And we'll say fourth dog. Ah, made a mistake there. Fourth dog dot image. It's going to be again UI image, image named. And again, very important to put this file name exactly the way we have it in our supporting files. So. Italian Greyhound dot JPEG. Oh, I made a mistake there. Dot JPEG. And now we have four dog objects. Um, 
Right now it's a little unorganized. In object-oriented languages, we create arrays to help us organize our objects. So right now we have all these indi individual objects. We have four dogs. But it'd be nice to put them in kind of a container to house all of our dog objects in one spot. And that way we can just store them. We can kind of leave it. It'll be persistent in memory, um, which means it'll keep all these ob dog objects for us. And we can access them dynamically as we need them later. So in order to do this, we can use what's called an array. We'll discuss more about arrays in our next video. But to get this to work first, let's go to mbfviewcontroller.h. We're going to add an additional property. So I'm going to add it with all my other properties. And we're going to make this the, the options here strong and non-atomic, which tells us it's going to be an object. And I don't need an IB outlet because this isn't going to be a view object. I'm just creating a property that this class can use. Um, again, we'll talk more about um, what NS mutable arrays are in our next set of videos, but we're going to give it the class NS mutable array, and we'll give it the variable name my dogs. So now I have access to the variable named my dogs inside of mbfviewcontroller.m. So I can go back to mbfviewcontroller.m. Um, while we create local variables, like fourth dog, third dog, and second dog, as well as my dog, there are some limitations to this in terms of I can't access these objects in other methods. So print hello world has no access to fourth dog. Right? I get an error here. I can't do dot name is equal to something new. Right? This is not valid. And it's going to basically say undeclared identifier fourth dog. The cool thing about properties is that we have access to this variable using the same name in all of our methods. And also, once we set our variable name equal to an object or give it a value, we can say that the variable is equal to an object and the object will exist for as long as our view controller exists. So it adds a degree of persistence to our ob objects as well. Our view controller now has a property that is a container that can hold dogs. So first we need to create our container. So we can do that in view did load. So we can write self dot my dogs, not my image use, self dot my dogs is equal to, and we have to actually create space and initialize our objects. So we're gonna do NS mutable array, which is the type. We're gonna allocate space for it, and we're gonna initialize the object. Um, before I do this, these, this self dot my dogs does not have a value, even though we can access the variable self dot my dogs in other methods, and this is valid, without setting it equal to a value, the object doesn't exist yet. So it's important to do this before you start using self.myDogs. You want to allocate and initialize space for it. Now that I have my container for my dogs set up, specifically of the object with the name self.myDogs, we can go ahead and start adding our dogs to our container. So I can say self.myDogs, and we have a very handy instance method that's called add object. Add object is defined as part of the NS mutable array class. And what it does is it allows us to add objects to our container. So we can first add my dog. Next we can do self.myDogs add object second dog. Self.myDogs add object third dog. And finally we can do self.myDogs add object fourth dog. Because we know that we can print our objects out with the percent add sign inside of an NSLog function call, I'm going to go ahead and show you what my mutable array looks like in the console. So we're going to do self.myDogs and go ahead and run my application. And we're going to see over here, ah, did that the wrong way make my console a little bit bigger, that I now have four dog objects inside of my array. Now it's not really being explicit about all the different properties and stuff that are set up, but I do see that I have four different dog objects, and incidentally, these are the memory addresses where each one of these dog objects is stored.